In this financial crisis, Russia was among the hardest hit. Even the country's president says his government underestimated the damage. I must admit that we sunk below our lowest expectations. In other words, the real damage to our economy was far greater than anything predicted by ourselves, the World Bank and other export organizations. One sign, the country's construction boom has ground to a halt. Unemployment in Russia has doubled, its GDP, the national growth rate, has been slashed. And the currency, the ruble, has lost 30%, all raising serious concerns about Russia's economic future. Although there are no shortage of optimists out there who already see green shoots of recovery. There is more sign of cargo being transported across Russia. Electricity consumption is beginning to rise again. There are some signs that uh, steel mills are back up towards uh, 100% uh, capacity. Uh, incomes are roughly where they were pre-crisis. Um, uh, so yeah, there are a number of signs that uh, the economy is beginning to come back. But Russia's problems run deep. Its dependence on oil exports, say analysts, makes the country particularly susceptible to boom and bust. But just as crucially for the economy, say analysts, is Russia's battered banking sector. Loans for cars and mortgages for houses were major drivers of annual growth rates of 7 and 8% here. After the financial crisis, the money has simply dried up. I don't believe in the coming two years Russia will be really able to come back to this strong growth rate. So most likely 2010-2011 uh, will be years of stagnation, most like, likely stagflation. And uh, actually this will be years of very modest growth rate. I'm Even for 2010 I'm looking for minus 1% GDP. And of course in Russia many analysts believe that the economy is only part of the equation. The rest as they say is politics. For investors and business people here the corruption, the lack of rule of law and the general criminality in Russia is its biggest obstacle to real economic growth. Bill Browder is foremost amongst the doubters. His investment fund was once the biggest foreign investor in Russia, but he says his methods, exposing corruption and poor corporate governance in the companies he invested in, angered the Russian authorities, got his assets seized and his visa revoked, though Russia has denied targeting him. As a long-term investment, um, uh, Russia is too risky. Uh, as a short-term investment, there are many moments when it could make sense. But the problem with Russia is you can't predict whether your property will be um, uh, left to its own devices or taken away at any moment because somebody wants it because it's valuable. It's a stark warning for investors thinking of buying into Russia. Whatever the economic state of this broken brick country, the risks will remain high. Matthew Chance, CNN Moscow.